have seen room one come to life. It is time for us to move on to room two of Carrington House. So this one is going to see quite a lot of changes in regard to its front facade. You're gonna see it go from this boarded up, tiny, small window into this beautiful opening using some amazing, amazing products from Hume Doors, from Alspec. I mean, it is going to be a transformation. But today, before we get started on that, we need to get in there and get cracking on demo. So we have the old original timber floors in really bad conditions, skirts falling off the walls, some walls falling down, and an asbestos ceiling, which we will be getting removed by the professionals. With that being said, let's crack open room two and get on with some demolition. All right, so under these layers and layers of old lino and newspaper, we were presented with a row of hardwood floors. Not in amazing condition, but better than I imagined. And we have James here ripping these up and denailing them with the Ferris Build team for their new life as decking boards on my best friend's project, The Lawn Rose Farm. Now it's time to reconvene with the team and plan those next steps. This window demo. It's not the original window. It's actually a random sized window that looks like it's been retrofitted sometime in the past hundred years. Regan got straight to work with removing that window. It literally fell out in his hands and then whipping out the quick saw that's right hiring in a quick saw or a concrete saw to start cutting through the render i tell you what there's not a lot of bricks to cut through here it is literally falling to pieces and i am on hose duty to keep that dust down time to check in with Josh to discuss the next stage. Right, so this room's got the old white set walls which is actually quite, uh, not bad condition except when I did that just there, it's a little bit on. So, yeah. how, there you so, go, there's a thing, how do I, if someone was to walk in and go, I've got white set walls, there's render falling off the wall over there and there's bricks falling out of the wall, how do I know whether the rest of my walls are shot? Like how could you give someone a quick tip? Quick tip, that's solid, that's hollow, that's come, come off the bricks. So does that mean the end of the world though? No. To hear more about working with white set, check out the video listed in the description where Josh goes into more detail about the various challenges and opportunities we're faced with. Now it's back over to Team Ferris to get the floor rebuilt. That is right, the whole floor. Bearers, joists, whaling plates, everything must be rebuilt from the ground up. But unlike in room one, we're not as close to the ground. We're a lot higher off the ground in here, which is great from a ventilation and moisture perspective. Either way, to keep us as safe as possible from the munchy termite critters, we are using some red alert beams again. These particular plugs are a 7mm hole. Yep. If it's really soft, drill a 6. Make and close. squeeze that in. Exactly. Okay, and if that doesn't work, move and go again. Yeah, try a different hole. What are your thoughts on battening, Megan? Slow and tedious and not real fun. He's just smiling for the camera. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so 
I knew when I bought this place that it had a pile of time with termites in it previously. I could see the damage in the exposed door jams, um, but there were other door jams that had arcs on them that looked okay. So today in room two, when I've arrived, the, we've taken the architraves off the internal door into that room so that um, because they were a bit dodgy, we could put new architraves on. We want to check out the door jam. The door jam is dead. It is completely, totally and utterly eaten out. There's nothing left in it. You cannot fix the door to it, which is usually no biggie. We can usually just totally pull it out. But in houses this old, like the lintel that goes across the top um, of the door actually supports a pile of the wall. And so in ripping out the door jam, there's a chance the whole wall is going to come down. And that wall's already been battened out, so days of work have been done on the inside of that wall. We haven't done the entry foyer yet, so it wouldn't be the end of the world if the wall fell down for the entry foyer. But it, yeah, it just adds an extra day of a tradesman. So that's, you know, an extra 500 bucks as well as new door jams. So all these little things do add up and this house is an extreme makeover. It's had termites, it's had erosion, it's had contamination, you know. So what am I gonna do to get myself through this? I am going to think about how fortunate I am to have this experience. I'm gonna have a cup of tea, I'm gonna breathe, and then I'm gonna go help my trades get this sorted. As you guys know, we ran into some substantial challenges in this room, room two. Uh, basically, maybe in hindsight, we would have knocked one of the hall walls down because it was so crappy. But Look, I think that you're making a good point here is that you've just hit something that most renovators will hit. Totally! Hey! Okay, so you've hit that period where I didn't think we'd have to do this. 100%. I hit the... And there's a good and a bad. Like, everything we go to do as a renovator, there's it works out perfectly. And then there's the it's completely gone to pot. And then there's this weird scale in between yep. so in this room we have totally hit that end of the scale which is really normal doesn't mean it feels any better when you hit it no it doesn't and the other thing is it does affect budgets when you do timelines. Hit this timelines and budgets the reason why we chose to do this was hopefully in the long term, it will make it easier and a better finish for what we want to achieve 100%, 100%. So it's better that we swallow it now and, and upgrade these walls, which is what oh, we're doing. without doubt. Um, otherwise, you were patching a very bad surface that could potentially, if someone's living in here, fall down and fall on them. Let's face it, if I didn't batten these walls out now, I would have painted them, patched them, I would have tried to hang something on them, and now we know they actually would have fallen to pieces. So, kind of the best idea, but the battening hasn't gone well. Like, we've battened these walls here because they're butting up against door jams. This was our first battening wall, and that was when we realised it was all going to pot. And, and it was really hard for the team to do. So, basically, to batten the walls, we've used this timber, uh, that we can screw our passport into. But so it's somewhat straight. The boys have packed this out and they've done an excellent job to get all this to line up. Otherwise you would see in the passport joint that it go <laughs> in and out, in and out. Uh, one of the problems the boys have had, if you have a look at this one, this particular one, they've tried to drill a hole here yeah. already and they've hit a soft brick or soft mortar and it's just crumbled away so they've had to go down a little bit and drill again. So That's it, the it frustration. So that that like Paul and Zach, it, it was a day to do that wall because he, it was like he actually battened it five times because there was so much work to do. So we actually on this wall, I gave them the go ahead just to build a frame in front of it because it, it literally took like an hour and a half yep. to build that frame. So the reason, if anyone's wondering why I didn't do this on all the other walls, first of all, that was our first wall. We didn't know it was going to be so bad. And on the other two walls, we have doors. And I don't really want like door jams 
this deep. Mm. So we've kind of had to make do. But what I want from your brain, your tradey brain, Josh, is I want to know what are all the different hacks and tricks if someone is literally facing what Paul Zach faced when he was doing this. If you want to hear more of Josh's tips for battening on these walls, check out the link in the description where it goes into much more detail. Regan has jumped on in to clean up and patch up the non-existent foundations under that front wall. Similar to in room one, there were no solid foundations under the front wall of the house. And so if I'm gonna be installing another set of amazing Hume doors in here, then I need to really reinstate that foundation so that I know this house will be standing for at least another 100 years and this room will finally start regaining some character back. Absolutely stunning. Now it's time to bring in the AllSpec team to decide on some amazing security screens for this front facade. And in the meantime, Zach is getting to work on these internal doors. I've chose to match the profile of the doors internally throughout the entire front cottage renovation. Your doors can give great continuity to your style, even when you're varying your colors and your finishes on them. As Zach does that, the Nui paint crew are sealing up any raw timber, raw MDF and raw edges to protect these doors from the elements before they get finally instated into their resting place. With most of the structural work complete, I've brought in our gyp rockers from Hunter Lining Projects so we can start to sheet these walls in some good old fashioned gyp rock. Looks good now. I think it's an amazing job. Yeah, it looks really good. We might even I don't have the sheets to go this way. Yep. So, you can see where those nails are, so we'll try and hit those as much as we can. Wow. In only one week, we have come so far. Now it's time for me and my eldest boy, Bailey, to clean up and get this room to prepped for the next stage. Thanks for joining me. Did you know I wrote a book all about creating wealth through renovating property? I've popped a link below in the description so you can check it out. See you next time and enjoy.